keys that you're going to have into this 2020 spring season? Uh, some keys for us are going to be how our or how quickly our new guys um, adjust to varsity baseball. We've got nine seniors, um, but they're largely unproven at the varsity level. We just returned two two of our mainstays or two of our full time starters um, in Timothy Glenn and David Wells. Um, both guys were probably our you know number two A and number two B. I guess you could say. Um, on the pitching staff last year behind Ty Wilmsmeyer. And uh, so those guys will be looked upon to anchor the pitching staff. And then Timothy Glenn also plays a position when he's not pitching. Um, more than likely it'll be shortstop. Last year it was shortstop and a little third base, kind of depending on who was on the mound. Um, and then we have Charlie Woodworth, who got some time last year. Um, probably hit towards the middle of the lineup and play first base more than likely or a corner corner infield spot um but just between those three guys they had the majority of our returning innings uh with david and timmy you know kind of our full-time guys and then uh charlie kind of filling in he got a few starts and, and had a pretty good jv season but um uh, you know just kind of newcomers uh just kind of how they adjust to the varsity varsity game and um just hopefully we can you know play good baseball Hope to play good baseball in this 2020 campaign. Class 5 Glendale, who's coming out of Springfield. And so, how far do you think these Glendale Falcons will go this season? Um, you know, that's kind of a big thing that's yet to be determined. I like our group. Um, I think we can, you know, do some damage. A lot of people have mentioned the, the phrase rebuilding year, but, um, you know, these guys have been waiting a while to show what they can do, and they've you know, had focused off season and so far early in the season here, about a week and a half into it, they've been, been pretty focused and had high energy in practices. And, uh, you know, they're kind of excited to, to show what they can do. Um, finally getting their chance. And, um, you know, it's a good group. We've got Turner Jackson behind the plate. Uh, he in throwing arm, uh, receives it well, handles, handles our pitchers well. Um, you know, can swing it fairly good, and he'll probably be in the middle of the lineup somewhere. Uh, um, Tommy Carr probably anchor a, uh, a middle infield position, maybe at shortstop if Timmy's pitching, uh, maybe at second base when Timmy's not pitching, and you know, maybe at third base even. Um, we've got a lot of guys that are pretty versatile, and uh, you know, will look to probably play a number of different positions depending on who's pitching. Tommy also pitches, so. You know, he'll be on the mound, um, hopefully give us some good innings. And so far in preseason stuff and early in practices, he looked pretty solid on the mound. Um, Matthew Kellerstrauss is coming off an injury last year. Uh, he is a dual athlete for us and that he runs track also. Um, so he's got obviously a lot of speed and he'll play center field for us and probably hit towards the top of the lineup in that one, two or three spot, kind of depending on you know how it shakes out and uh alex tarter um another guy that go compete for an infield spot um you know good kid works hard uh handles the bat well can bunt can run um and probably been played a lot of second base for us at the jv level and and last summer and then harper brady compete for a outfield spot um plays pretty good defense um just needs to get more consistent with the bat but uh, didn't play baseball for uh, years. I mean, played as a little leaguer and then took some time off, did some acting, um, stuff like that. And so he joined us back up as a sophomore a couple of years ago, and he's come a long way developing his skills. And uh, he will compete for an outfield spot along with Tyler McClellan. Um, he's kind of battling a hamstring right now, so he's been out of practice for a few days and trying to get him back healthy so he can get out there and compete for one of those outfield spots as well. And then we've got, you know, several juniors that will step up and probably, uh, probably get some time and push those guys. And, uh, Zach Beatty, um, Isaac Wells, Jude Birch, uh, Kent Lockhart, just to name a few. And, Andrew Clemens, Justin Letterman, uh, Carson Wade, and uh, Jason Rollins kind of round out our junior class. So, you know, those guys are going to be pushing those seniors and uh, for some playing time. And, um, you know, don't 
not for sure even what we're going to do opening day yet. We have a jamboree coming up Friday that'll tell us a lot, but um, you know, I think we've got a good mix of, of those guys that I mentioned and, um, you know, even some younger guys that can push those guys to uh, create some, some quality, healthy competition and practices. Now you said you have a jamboree coming up on, on Friday. Who's going to be in your jamboree and where will your jamboree be at for this 2020 uh, season? We are going to Parkview, so it'll be us and Parkview open it up, and then uh, Hillcrest and Fair Grove. So we'll play each of them three innings, and uh, uh, you know, really looking forward to it. We, we scrimmaged last Saturday, just an inner squad scrimmage, and um, you know, guys competed well and hustled and played hard, and that was a lot of fun just to get back out there and a game situation or game like atmosphere with you know i even had some fans in the stands and umpires and everything like that so i got the uh the juices going a little bit and excitement and everything and so looking forward to this jamboree and then opening the season opening the season you guys open your season will be next week from what i heard and for your for this season you guys will open your season next week against carthage that will be on march 21st at 10 a.m and then you guys will play vertigris out of Oklahoma, just right outside of Tulsa. So, yeah. what do you know about Carthage and and Vertigris? When do you play them on Saturday, the twenty first of March? Uh, Carthage is going to be. Uh, they're always well coached. Um, they're going to be tough. Uh, they're they're always scrappy. Uh, they graduated two of their top arms from last year. Um, you know, but the, I know they were pretty deep last year, pitching wise. And, and you know, like I said, they're always going to be a tough group to play. And Good one to open up with, um, and then Vertigris is, from what I hear and what I've seen so far, and kind of talk to people, they're really a quality team. Um, you know, pretty pretty athletic and swinging pretty well. Um, so you know, that's the kind of people we we want to play, especially right off the bat. Kind of see how you stack up. Got to be playing the best people to you know improve your game, and and you know, there's that old saying to to be the best, you have to play the best, and. I'm a firm believer in that and try to schedule the best people I possibly can. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what makes it fun. Kind of does what makes it fun. And then you're also going to be in the Willard leadoff tournament and then the red and blue tournament, which we believe the red and blue tournament is your own tournament. So you guys play Jackson in the red and blue tournament out of the boot heel in Missouri, right outside of Cape Girardeau. So what do you know about the Willard leadoff tournament and your red and blue tournament? Uh, the Willard tournament is is always a tough tournament. Scott does a good job of bringing in um, you know a lot of quality teams and teams from outside our area that we don't see a lot. Um, you know, and he's done that again with Jackson. Not too familiar with the program. When I was at Forsyth a long time ago, we played them over the summer, and um, you know they were they were a good team. And I know a lot of baseball down in the boot heel there's some good team we played cape central out of the boot heel last year and they were really competitive and um you know another hard-nosed team that made you play the right way to uh to compete with them and they're always going to play the right way and hustle and do things right and uh so looking forward to that tournament and playing some quality teams in that one as well and and then the red and blue we kind of try to do the same thing bring in some people from out of the area and uh and see, you know, how we match up with some teams from the Kansas City area and, uh, and you know, outside of our normal comfort zone, I guess you could say. So it kind of does help to bring some teams outside of the area, say teams from St. Louis, teams from Columbia, Jefferson City, Kansas City, Southeast Missouri. So it kind of challenges players when you have, have teams from different parts of the state and even teams from out of state as well, because I don't know if you guys will play any other teams from out of state besides Burgess, Oklahoma. But yeah, not not this year. But we've got yeah. I mean, like the St. Louis area and Kansas City, and even the Columbia area with Battle coming down, and you know some of those people that you don't see. And uh, and we like to you know try to schedule some non-conference and especially tournaments. Try to schedule some of those people and uh, you know kind of see how you match up. And a lot of those guys like Marquette that's in the Willard tournament. They were uh, they played for the state championship last year and. Uh, we got to play them last year and we'll get to play them again this year. And, you know, Platte County is always strong and, uh, we some North and, uh, battle and Belton and some guys like that, but pretty good schools, pretty good teams traditionally that you try to try to bring in and, um, see where you're at. 
Now talking about now in the city of Springfield, you're going up against Parkview, Hillcrest, Central, and Kickapoo. So how do you think the city of Springfield on the diamond will face off with Glendale, Parkview, Hillcrest, Kickapoo, and Central? Uh, I think we, you know, baseball's in pretty good hands in Springfield. Where, um, you know, all those schools you mentioned are always going to be well coached. Uh, I got a good group of coaches, I think, in Springfield. And I'm fortunate to be one of those guys and learning from these guys that you compete against all the time and, you know, kind of go to some of the same meetings with SPS and things like that. But Central just got a new field built and should be done. Uh, I think they got the playing surface done actually this week and just kind of finishing up some housekeeping things, but they got a new field. So uh, that'll be exciting to play on. Um, you know, Kickapoo is always good. Hillcrest traditionally is always good. Parkview is is good too and it's you know just a a good group of guys to compete against and good coaches and they always have their players well prepared and um it's just fun to uh to play against those guys and even our conference is one of the the toughest i think in the state class five level um you know we got teams like lebanon and rolla and west plains and you know some of those guys that are are always good and mix those in with the Springfield schools and you know, it's a tough conference all the way up and down. And I know I've missed some and try not to leave anybody out, but uh, you know, it's, it's a really competitive, tough conference. Tough conference. It is with the Ozark conference, which is West Plains, Camdenton, all the Springfield schools. So Lebanon and also Rolla and Waynesville, which are in the OC. Yeah. So what is, yeah, so what Camden will be, too, Forgot them, but they, I mean, they're, they're a really good program and faced them last year in the, uh, sectional game. So I don't think they graduated much. So they'll be, they'll be good this year too. And so now with the Ozark conference, how do you think each team will match up from the schools in Springfield to Rolla, West Plains, Waynesville, and Camdenton? Um, I think we, you know, Springfield schools match up pretty well with them. Um, it's a, it's always a wide open conference. I'd hate to handicap it and, and kind of predict who's going to win the conference or where they'll finish. But you know, it's 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 a tough conference. It's just like the uh, you know, when I was at Forsyth, that was a a real tough conference too. And any anybody can beat anybody um, on any night. So you better be prepared, and uh, you're going to see everybody's number one pitcher in conference games. And uh, so it's just it's just tough, but. Yeah, those schools that, that you mentioned, the Lebanons, Lebanon will be really good this year. Camdenton solid, Waynesville, West Plains, Tarala. Um, you know, the, all those guys are are tough opponents. Not only when you play the schools from the Ozark Conference, but you'll play some COC schools this year in Ozark. You'll play Nixa, you'll play mm-hmm. Branson, and Republic and Joplin. So what do you know about about the schools of Nixa, Ozark, Republic, Joplin, and Branson that come out of the COC, including Carthage and Neosho? Uh, Nixa is, um, I mean, Nixa and Ozark are always are always going to be good. Uh, Coach Doherty and Coach Essek do tremendous things there. and um, I know Coach Doherty has a really solid pitching staff. Uh, his best guy was a sophomore last year, so he's going to be a junior this year. And, um, he's got another lefty, the two main studs or lefties um that are that are solid and um you know i think they lost three games last year and uh returned most of their their core um from last year so they're gonna be tough and ozark's always gonna be good um you know and then republic is handed it to us last year uh so so they're they're tough and you know, everybody, like I said early on, we, we try to put together a, a strong schedule. I think that does nothing but good things for you come district time. You've kind of been battle proven and maybe beat up a little bit along the way. And, uh, you know, like I think that helps out tremendously come district time when, um, you know, you've kind of had a little pressure on you throughout the year or, or maybe faced adversity and, uh, you know, you have that experience to fall back on. A bit of experience to fall back on when you play the schools from the COC. And now, so what is going to be the Glendale way that you're going to be coaching your players this year? What's the Glendale way of coaching that you coach your players? 
Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to hustle. We're going to not give up. Um, you know, never quit until baseball is a little different from a sport like basketball where you can kind of run the clock out. But, you know, in baseball, you've got to, got to throw strikes, got to throw it over the plate. And if we're behind, you got to, you know, pitch to us and give us a chance to, to get on base and things like that. So I think we'll be hard nosed and tough. Um, but, you know, play loose and, and have fun playing the game at the same time. Have fun playing the game at the same time. And so last season, the Washington Nationals during the postseason had this word known as finish the fight. And during the postseason of for Major League Baseball, did you kind of instill that? Do you say, whatever fight we're getting in, let's finish it? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of our, you know, not necessarily in those words, but, you know, we always talk about the game's not over until it's actually over. You could be down, you know, five runs in the seventh inning and you still have a chance to come back. You just got to, you know, get people on base and do little things right and, you know, take it one pitch at a time and, and battle and, and, you know, don't give up until the fight's over and try to finish the fight. Now, another thing to talk about is the big words. So what are the big words that you're going to be lecturing to, to bring a win to your clubhouse? Um, you know, I think we, I'm, I'm a firm believer in paying attention to details and that small things add up to big things. Um, and so, you know, we just try to, I guess if we have a motto, it's just pay attention to details. And, um, you know, we try to, I try to say that or mention that every practice, whether it's before or after or both. And, you know, just try to get the kids to, to kind of buy in, to pay attention to details and not take shortcuts and, I tell them a lot, you know, I'd rather you do the rep, the, uh, you know, whatever we're doing, getting off the tee or taking the ground ball, I'd rather you do it correctly three times than incorrectly five times. And so trying to pay attention to details and do it right, and, um, I think that goes a long way. It does go a long way. And so what will be the main objective for this spring season? Um, you know, our, some of our team goals are we're defending conference champions and defending district champions. So, um you know, trying to defend our conference and defend that district, which we don't know yet, but I'm sure it'll be pretty close to what it has been. But, um, you know, those are some of our team goals. And uh, another one is always, you know, we're trying to win 20 games. It's kind of a magic number in in a lot of sports, but trying to get to that 20 win plateau and then, you know, go as far as we can, put, us, put ourselves in a good position come district time and postseason time. Any sport besides football can go up to 20 wins in a season. Basketball, baseball, maybe volleyball, as well as softball. They can go to 20 wins. It just got to take a lot of work. So mm -hmm. now one thing about it, this Glendale team. So what is one word that describes the Glendale Falcons for this season? Uh, uh, hustle. Hustle. We're going to try to hustle and you know be aggressive on bases and – do that by hustling. Hustle is a big word for the Glendale Falcons, which I don't know if it says that in, in Glendale's dugout there at, at Glendale or not, but it's one thing that you can instill into your, into your players is hustle, whether you're out in the field or on the bases, it's hustle. It's also the same thing that goes with, with football, with baseball, with basketball. So it, hustles does go in with any sport. And so now there's one thing that's been going on in the news so far is about the uh, coronavirus. One thing that you guys have been telling to make sure everybody is healthy and hopefully they're not, they don't get sick when they're coming into practice or in games. Yeah, we, um, you know, we really haven't talked about the coronavirus and, um, you know, as just kind of broken it down and talked about that, but we always, I always tell the kids before the season starts and the parents, you know, in parent meetings and stuff like that, if your son is, <clears throat> excuse me, if your son is sick, um, then, you know, try to keep him at home and get him healthy. And we don't want an illness, whatever it is, to spread throughout the team. And, um, you know, we've had a couple of kids miss uh, with various illnesses and stuff like that so far this year. And just try to, it's not that we're throwing them away or, or whatever you want us to call it, but, you know, just trying to keep them at home and keep them healthy, even if they're a little bit remotely sick, rather them not spread it throughout the team and stuff like that. And then, you know, I'm a, also a health teacher, so we talk a lot about hygiene and um, immune system and things like that and how to boost your immune system and keep it strong and, uh, you know, 
I've got a lot of my players in health, and so we talk a lot about, you know, hand washing and, you know, just the routine hygiene things that you do or should be doing on a routine basis and eating right and taking care of your body and getting sleep, all that good stuff. Just being right, eating healthy, just, just promoting personal hygiene is also one thing that you can take on the on the ball field, but also away from the ball field. And so that is one thing that can really take – that can really – eliminate getting sick during the season in which no no team can afford sick players during the season and so once and now one other thing we got to talk about before we let you go is what do you think you're going to be expecting for classes one through five and then the coc conference this year uh man that's a tough question um I know those Crane Pirates are a pretty good ball team, uh, so I'm looking looking for them to do some good things. Um, but I know they had a pretty good fall, and that's again though a tough conference, and um, I'm sure they'll be in a tough district, and um, you know some old foes and friends that I used to play against at Forsyth with Clever, they're going to be pretty solid, I would imagine, and probably Purdy also. They're always pretty good, um, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a long, tough season, and I know there's a lot of good teams out there. And uh, those are conference wise. Like I said, it's going to be tough every single night. And um, you know, I'm sure Coach Harmon, Coach Snyder, and Coach Richardson, and some of those guys would say the same thing about who they're playing. Who they're playing it is. And now, if there are any final words you had to say to each coach you're going to be playing for this season, what's going to be the words to? each coach and their team that you're going to be playing for this season? Uh, you know, just tell them after the game, you know, how their how their team did, kind of what I like about them, and, you know, their good luck. And I uh, always try to help out fellow coaches if I can, you know, with uh, some advice if they need it or what I think or anything like that. And I, I do the same thing talking to coaches. And so, you know, coaching is a, a pretty – pretty solid fraternity and everybody's pretty willing to help each other out or you know bounce ideas off of each other and different things like that so just look forward to to seeing them all on the field and competing against them and um you know learning from them at the same time learning from them at the same time and not only does baseball affect the players but it's also a teaching version for the coaches and that will end today's show for today we hope you enjoyed our show we hope you enjoyed us sitting down with the head coach of the glendale falcons coach jim julian if you'd like to stay connected with the Glendale Falcons through their social media, be sure to like them on Facebook. Also follow them on Twitter. Their Twitter is at GHS Baseball SBS. Also check out their website. Their website is at SPS.com. And also check out Misha.org for their schedule. As once again, the Glendale Falcons will open the 2020 spring season at home against Carthage. It will be on Saturday, March 21st at 10 o'clock in the morning. So be sure to come to Don Vance Field there in Springfield to cheer on those Falcons. If you'd like to stay connected with Ozark Sports Report through our social media, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, and check out our website. Our website is ozarksportsreport.wixsite.com slash ozarksportsreport. Also check out our Podbean as we will also post this episode on Podbean as well as on YouTube. For one final time, I'm Adam Smith from the Ozark Sports Report saying, have a good day everybody. Thank you.